Finally, at long last, we've solved Suitless Diving Bell. The Diving Bell, for those who don't know, is the submerged structure on the Stranger, which has the green fire in it and the prisoner's sarcophagus, and a couple of ship logs. So first we're just going to fly to the Stranger. This is the same blind flight strip setup that we use in all the categories that do this. We have to enter the hull breach because we would suffocate in the hangar. So we just position the ship here and then we can jump out. And we can use the flashlight to open the door. It's possible to position the ship so that you can open the door with the headlights, but there's no need to do that. And now we just grab the artifact and we're gonna raft with it to lowlands. And here I'm going to attempt to smack the raft into the left side so that it rotates, so that I can just go a little bit faster. Not that it matters, because this whole trick is kind of on a cycle, because at one point we're going to need to wait for the flood to happen. So the position of the rafts is going to matter later. So you saw that one that's just floating in the middle of Reservoir. Then we have this one that we're currently using. We're going to jump off of this one, going to Lowlands. I used to dock it at that dock, but it's just a little bit faster to jump off. There's a strat you can do to jump off of the dam and suitless make it over to Lowlands, but I don't think it saves time in this particular situation. You can do a similar strat there, where you bonk off that raft to rotate, but I didn't get it. And I'm just going to jump off and go to Woodlands. Woodlands is useful here because the spawn point of Woodlands is under the water level. The Dream is kind of like a flat plane with a set water level, and if you go under that, it's going to wake you up because of extinguishing the artifact. But this specific building disables the water so that you can be here. And the way it does that is there's a trigger in this archway that you have to jump over here that basically enables and disables the water. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to wake up while we're passing through that trigger, which is going to cause a glitch. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to spawn a raft, we're going to put the artifact on the raft, and then we're going to wait for the raft to float all the way downriver out of the area. And when it leaves the area, it's going to wake us up. So we're using this to get a wake up on a timer, basically. And you might have noticed I split when I press the button to focus my lantern to spawn the raft. And I'm going to use that to time when I'm going to wake up. So yeah, I'm going to go over here, I'm going to stand against this wall position myself and I'm just going to wait. And when my split timer on the bottom says 124, that's when I'm going to go. And I'm just going to run and jump through the arch.
and there we go. And we call that trick Wet Air Bonk because it gives us air underwater. And Dry Air Bonk is a similar trick that does something else. So now I'm just gonna go jump in the water to see if it worked. And there's a spot over here where you can usually get back up on land. And I don't hear suffocation noises, that means it worked. Unfortunately, I had some trouble getting back up here. But it didn't end up being an issue. I just need to get to a raft. And there's a raft like just downstream here. It can be a little finicky to actually get up on this land instead of being washed downstream. But I got it here. And then I just get on this raft. I don't need the artifact anymore, so I just abandoned it. I was carrying it around there because I was uh, thinking about doing a second attempt at wet air bonk if it didn't work. But that's just for practice. If you don't get the first try here, then you're going to be too slow to do the rest of the stuff. So now we're returning to Gorge, because we need to go back to the ship. Because the ship has a scout launcher we can use. And we need to be able to carry the scout around Sivas for a trick that we're going to do in a minute. And the way we achieve that is with a another trick called scout Scoutsicle, which is where you attach the scout to an object that you can carry around. And in this case, we're going to use a scroll from Brittle Hollow. You can also do this with a reel on older versions of the game. I'm playing on 1.1.11 because of that, but I decided to use a Brittle Hollow one instead. And the reason we're going to Brittle Hollow is just because there's a convenient scroll wall on the surface at the North Pole. Any ship accessible scroll wall can work for this. There is a minor complication here that can happen, where if you put the scout sickle on a raft, the scout can be lighting up all the orbs, which makes it impossible to steer the raft. So the way we avoid that is the placement of the scout on the scroll wall affects the offset when you pick up the scroll. So if we put it in the lower right here, then when we put the scout or when we put the scroll on the ground the scout is going to be underneath the scroll, which for the rafts means it's under the raft, so it won't be lighting up any of the orbs and we can steer. And now we go back to the stranger. We have to mark it this time because blind stranger flights depend on loop time because of the movement of all the planetary bodies. And it's just been so long. You're going to get here at different times, depending on how long it took you, so we just mark it. We've already been there, so we definitely won't be able to mark it. Back to the hull breach. Because even though we have that underwater breathing glitch active, we can still suffocate. Scout made it a little bit hard to see here, but I managed to get it. And 
now we return to the raft that we left in Gorge. Scoutsicle on the raft, and what that's going to do is it means the scout is going to basically move with the raft, which is the whole point of doing that. There's a weird quirk though where if you put an object on a raft and then raft around the stranger, sometimes it'll turn invisible or like disappear, and we need to avoid that, so that's why I'm picking it up and putting it back down. And now I'm simply going to raft over to those other rafts in the center of Reservoir. One of those is the one that starts there, the other one is the one I was using earlier that I jumped off of. And we're going to leave the Scoutsicle, switch rafts, and go up the dam. And now we're going to do a trick called Reservoir Deloading. Basically we're going to put the Reservoir in a glitched state where when the scout is in reservoir, everything's loaded properly, but when the scout is not in reservoir, a bunch of collision and textures are missing, and stuff like that. And the way it works is, is just, you put the scout in reservoir, then you go all the way to that little viewing room at the bottom here, and then you just go back. Well, you don't need to go all the way to the viewing room. And now the glitch is active. Nothing will look weird until the scout actually leaves the area. Which will happen when the dam breaks. And then the flood will happen, the raft will drift downstream, and everything will deload. And then later, the raft will drift back into reservoir, which will cause everything to reload properly. And we need both of those effects. So the dam is going to break really soon, but we got here just in time that we can swim over to underneath this building near the diving bell. And there's a piece of land underneath the house that we're going to be on after the flood, which is at a higher elevation than the diving bell, so we can jump off and get a decent distance under the diving bell, which is good because when you're suitless, you just kind of slip into the surface usually. And we want to build up a bunch of upward speed, so we need to be pretty far down. And there goes the raft. I'm going to set up my position here, and then I'm just going to watch the raft. But yeah, we can't enter in the deloaded state because the water level is too low. And we can't enter in the, the fully loaded state because there's a bubble of water that ignores our underwater breathing glitch and kills us anyway. But if we time it properly, we can start entering while it's deloaded, but right before we surface, everything loads in, and then we have a bunch of upward speed and we can make it to the surface fast enough to not drown. You gotta keep an eye on the raft because normally when you have the suit on, there's a HUD indicator for where the scout is, but I don't have that, so I have to just manually keep an eye on it. I need to wait for the raft to pass the last visible position, and then I'm going to count three seconds, and then go.
here it comes. And right when it goes behind this tree, I'm gonna count to three. And go. And we're gonna just position under. We're gonna surface. The reload happens. And we can just make it to the surface before drowning. And then we can just get the locks. And there you have it, Suitless Diving Bell.